Hello, hello. I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Welcome, everyone. Today, we'll explore various mental health disorders, their symptoms and characteristics. By understanding these disorders, you'll be better equipped to tackle the psych -sos section. Let's get started. Beginning with schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a prototypical disorder characterized by psychosis, which includes positive symptoms, like delusions or hallucinations, and negative symptoms like the disturbance of affect and abolition, which means the loss of motivation. When you hear positive symptoms, you want to think of adding something. So we're adding hallucinations, things that weren't there before. Adding disorganized speech, you're now talking funny. Whereas negative symptoms, we are removing things from people. So a reduced affect, we're removing the sense of happiness. Next, we want to talk about the different depressive disorders. Depressive disorders include major depressive disorder, persistent depressive disorder, or dysthymia, and seasonal affective disorder, or SAD. These conditions involve persistent feeling of sadness, hopelessness, and a loss of interest in activities with varying sensitivity and duration. Similar to depressive disorders are bipolar and bipolar related disorders. So there are three you need to be aware of on the MCAT. There's bipolar type one, and bipolar type 2. But generally, bipolar disorders are characterized by manic and hypomanic episodes. A manic episode is a period of elevated mood and energy levels where you feel on top of the world and you can do anything. And a hypomanic episode is when you are feeling still better, that you can do a lot of things, but not quite as God comes. So what is the definition of a bipolar type 1? Well, you have to have at least one manic episode. So that means you're having one super feeling good moment. So that would be up here. For bipolar type 2, you have at least one hypomanic episode and one major depressive episode. So with bipolar type 2, you have the sadness coming as well. So that is our green graph where we start with a major depressive episode and then we shoot on up to a hypomania. And now cyclothymic disorder is kind of a mid version of this, where you have hypomanic episodes and dysthymia, which is a mild but persistent depression. So cyclothymic, we're not having any of those extremes. It's the black line here where we get some depression, we get some hypomania, we get some depression, we get some hypomania. None of those extreme major depression or super exciting mania. Now looking at the anxiety disorders, these include things like general anxiety disorder, phobias, social anxiety disorder, agoraphobia, panic disorder. These conditions involve excess fear or worry that can interfere with daily functioning. Breaking these down a little bit, let's take a look at OCD. This is characterized by obsessions, which are persistent and intrusive thoughts, and compulsions, which are repetitive tasks that relieve tensions but impair daily life. For example, a compulsion could be to wash your hands 50 times before you leave the house. You know, this is going to take a lot of time, it's going to make it tough to live your life, but it is going to relieve a bit of mental tension that a person with OCD would have. Another type of disorder uh, is called body dysmorphic disorder. So this involves an unrealistic and importantly negative evaluation of one's appearance, often leading to obsessive thoughts and behaviors. So in this example, there's a person who looks fine, but is seeing themselves as being a hideous ogre goblin thing. That is not the reality. Next, we want to look at PTSD, which is a condition that develops after experiencing a traumatic event, which causes intrusive symptoms such as flashbacks, nightmares, avoidance, negative cognition, and arousal symptoms. These are very common in people returning from war, or victims of abuse. Another interesting psychological disorder is known as Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID. This involves disassociative amnesia, disassociative fugue, disassociative identity disorder, and there are various disassociative disorders, such as disassociative amnesia, disassociative fugues, disassociative identity disorder, and depersonalization slash derealization disorder. These conditions involve disruptions in memory, identity, or their perceptions of reality. And finally, we have the somatic symptom and related disorders. These disorders involve significant bodily symptoms with no clear medical explanations. They're just coming out of nowhere and physicians aren't sure why. The first of these is the somatic symptom disorder, which is where a person has excessive concern over a symptomatic symptom. So if you have a runny nose, a person with somatic symptom disorder might think, oh my God, I'm going to die from this runny nose. It's my brain melting and leaking out of my nose. What do I do? Um, it's probably not that bad. Next, we have illness and 
anxiety disorder, which is the preoccupation with thoughts of having or developing a serious illness. So a person with illness anxiety disorder would be walking around and thinking, man, I sure hope I don't get pancreatic cancer, but I know I'm going to get pancreatic cancer. I'm so afraid of getting pancreatic cancer. And it makes it hard for them to live their lives because they're just obsessing about developing some disease like pancreatic cancer. Next, we have the conversion disorder. These are unexplained symptoms affecting bodily function, often associated with prior trauma. The MCAT will often present this in almost a poetic way. So the example I like to give is if a mother sees her child get flattened by a semi in front of her, she might then experience blindness, even though no trauma, physical trauma happened to her eyes, but she is unable to look at the world anymore without her son there. So she's developed conversion disorder resulting in blindness. Finally, you have to worry about hypochondriasis. This is the persistent belief in having a serious illness despite there being no symptoms. So this would be somebody who thinks they have pancreatic cancer, although there are no symptoms pointing to pancreatic cancer. And finally, we have the three clusters of personality disorders. These involve inflexible, maladaptive behavioral patterns that cause distress or impaired functioning, and they're grouped into three. We have cluster A, the weird cluster, which is made up of paranoid, schizotypal, and schizoid disorders. Cluster B, the wild type, is antisocial, uh, borderline personality disorder, hysteronic personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder. Finally, cluster C, we have the worried group. Uh, this is avoidant personality disorder, dependent personality disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. So this is the same thing as OCD. Understanding the various mental health disorders can help you better tackle these questions when it comes to the MCAD. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.